Hi, I'm Kate Marion. I thought I'd talk to you today about one of my books. It's the one called Shine, and it's about a 12-year-old girl called Tiff, whose mum likes to steal things instead of buy them. And I'm going to read you one of the chapters to whet your appetite. Mikey's waiting for us in a car I've never seen before. We throw our stuff in the boot and climb in. Mikey's puffing away at a fat cigar. Mum shares her wine with him and off we roar, away from London, away from home. You excited, Tiffany? asks Mikey, puffing thick cigar smoke all round the car. Who knows where we're going to end up, eh? Ooh, somewhere hot for me, please. I force a smile, do up my seat and peer at Chardonnay, my dog. Luckily, she's already snoozing away in her cosy rucksack nest. Mum and Mikey start droning on about boring stuff and making rude jokes. It's dark and it's late and the car is full of smoke, but I know Mikey's face and I know I saw it on Crime Watch. I guess I must have fallen asleep because the next thing I know is that Mum is waking me, is shaking me awake. Wakey, wakey, sleepyhead, she's saying. Wakey, wakey. I open my eyes. It's really dark outside and raining hard. I stuff my hand in my rucksack and give Chardonnay a reassuring stroke. She licks my fingers and snuggles back down. My neck aches from sleeping in the car and I badly need a wee from all the Shirley Temples that Chelsea and I had drunk. This doesn't feel like a fun holiday to me, but Mum and Mikey are laughing and having a good time. We're in Dover, Tiff, says Mum. Then she and Mikey start singing some old song, There'll be bluebells over the white cliffs of Dover. We pull up in a line of cars queuing to get on the ferry. Mike is holding all our passports and he keeps tap, tap, tapping them on the steering wheel, waiting to get through passport control. All right, mate, he asks the passport man when it's our turn. The man nods, peers into the car and then starts checking our passports one by one. Mikey's tapping gets louder and more and more impatient and Mum starts switching her diamond rings from one finger to another. Can we go home? I whisper. Shh, baby, says Mum, leaning over and stroking my head with a hard hand. Nearly there. The man, pans, pa, the man hands the passports back to Mikey and waves us on. Phew, sighs Mikey, relaxing as we pull away. Yay, she shrieks Mum, frantically jiggling my hand up and down. Freedom, Tiff, freedom! Suddenly, some policemen step in front of the car and wave us over to one side. Mikey starts tap, tap, tapping on the steering wheel again, and Mum starts fidgeting with her hair. Uh, just a routine check, sir, says one of the policemen, leaning into the front window. May we take another look at your passports? Uh, is this completely necessary, says Mikey. We need to board the ferry as soon as, he says, waving a hand toward me. Kid needs the toilet, know what I mean? I'm afraid it is necessary, sir, and we'll get you on board as soon as we can. I feel really awake now, because something's not right. All the other cars are driving past us and climbing the ramp to board the ferry. But we're stuck here with policemen asking us questions. It's late and I want to be at home, asleep next to Chelsea, dreaming of the Wizard of Oz and Shirley Temple cocktails. I wish my mum had never had this stupid idea in the first place. I don't even want to go on holiday. I want my normal Saturday with Chelsea and me cozying up in bed, watching TV and eating ice cream straight from the tub. With mum and me together, wandering through the shops, buying cool stuff, getting dressed up in new clothes and having lunch out like ladies do. And we plan to take Chardonnay to the park and everything is going wrong. The policeman looks at me, scratches his head, then turns to Mikey. Are you the registered keeper of this vehicle, sir? Uh, yes, mate, says Mikey, tapping and tapping. It's all in order, officer. I just bought it from my brother-in-law. He must have forgotten to send off the papers. The policeman scratches his head again and I wonder if he has nits like Chelsea and I had in the summer. If you'd like to get out of the vehicle, sir, and step this way. <clears throat> Mikey groans and opens the door. Mum lets out a wounded dog squeal and starts rocking backwards and forwards, humming the White Cliffs of Dover song. Then we're surrounded by blue flashing lights, and I know that Crime Watch was true and that Chelsea was right. A large ball of worry 
drops into my tummy and wobbles around and a sharp lump sticks in my throat. I start tap tap tapping and, hang, and humming the White Cliffs of Dover song too because now I really know that my mum is in trouble. Big trouble. And what about me? All the doors are pulled open. There are policemen everywhere and handcuffs are snapped onto Mikey and Mum. Mum, I call from the back seat. Mum, what's happening? It's all right, babe. Mama's here, no worries. Her voice trembles as someone guides her towards a police car. You and me, Tiff, she calls through the rain. You and me, Mum, I call back, panicking. You and me. I watch my mum pulling and struggling against the policeman. She starts screaming at them and fighting, and I wish they knew how to soothe her tantrums. A lady police officer climbs in the car and sits next to me. I'm Benita, she says. What's your name, love? Tiffany, I sniff. What's happening to my mum? I'm really sorry, Tiffany, she says, handing me a tissue. We have to take your mum and dad into custody for a bit. There's some stuff that's happened and we just need to check it all out. She's trying to sound cheerful and reassuring. We'll have you all back together as soon as we can. He's not my dad, I say. He's my mum's business partner. He's not my dad. Then before I know it, I am in a police car and my little wheelie suitcase is in the back. My mum's in another car being driven away from me with blue lights flashing. I don't even know where Dover is and I need the toilet and Chardonnay's wriggling in the bag. The large ball keeps rolling around in my tummy, making me feel like I'm going to be sick. I can't stop my hand tap, tap, tapping on the car window and the White Cliffs of Dover song is spinning through my mind like it's got stuck in my brain. Where are you from, Tiffany? Benita asks. London, I say. Is there anyone we can call for you, love? Your dad, maybe? Or grandparents, aunts, uncles, friends? There's my school friend Chelsea, I sniff. But her dad's really angry with my mum. Anyone else? I shake my head. No one, I say. Just me and mum. So if you want to find out more about what happens to Tiffany, check out your bookshop and go by shine. Bye.